Good morning, folks. Starting with a quick earthquake watch update if you missed the evening news or Twitter update. We've taken six significant earthquakes in the last 12 days now, compared to only four in the previous 50 plus days. Now let's take a look at some longer term seismic trends. Many of you know Gayan Huoto here on YouTube. His name is Thomas, and he and I have exchanged about 200 emails in the last couple of months over timelines, qualifications, troubleshooting, and correcting for the computerization of the USGS. Now we've got the number of earthquakes plotted for each year in a number of different ways. Six magnitude earthquakes appear to be increasing over the last four decades. Seven magnitude earthquakes appear to be increasing over the last four decades. Eight magnitude earthquakes appear to be increasing over the last four decades. These are just a sample of the work being put together at this time. We've also broken the world into zones. The final product of this work will be shared with everyone. Article recommendations, latest from the ESO here. They've discovered variable density in asteroids. Pretty cool. Brand new image of a somewhat new Martian crater. Topographic anomalies between 2010 and 2012 in our satellite images caused them to point a better camera at the area and indeed it's our first sight ever of this celestially infant feature. Let's start our weather watch in Europe today. Railway traffic is halted in some areas because the tracks are literally washed away. I'm not sure the warnings can come out quickly enough here. Those lows are way too strong. That's why we're seeing such terrible wind and water, because the actual cloud groupings are not that bad. Let's look at the cold returning to Alaska as a piece of those stuck lows breaks off towards the west coast of the U.S. The system over the sea is now much weaker as the moisture drive heads over the west and southwest for another day. Australia and New Zealand. Looks like the tropical storm east is far less significant than the North Australian rain right now. I'd say big 10-4 on the pressure, but the water vapor proves that the small system heading for Auckland can't be ignored. As of now, the current rain event is catching the attention of the measurement mission as isolated flooding remains possible. Last but not least, an ugly hook convergence tailing up onto the southeast coast as the low down there rivals the one over Europe. Strong drive convergence up towards the equator. Going to the gamma ray bursts, we saw one just come out of Ursa Major in Celestial North. Solar wind is not harsh, but it's not calm either. Slightly rising speed with variable density won't be enough for storm conditions, but the sensitive meters are showing the slight perturbation. Solar magnetic shutdown 1, massive sunspot 0. The score is actually much more lopsided as we've now watched for over two years. Megaspots either decay or fail to reach their flare potential based on magnetic class. Our magnetic connection keeps some measure of focus on those departing groups. Helios, I appreciate the effort on the eastern limb, but at this point the dragon's a bit too far ahead to be chased. Coronal fields are open. Make that wide open. No major Earth-directed eruptions in the last day. Got our current conditions and the solar North Pole plasma dance-off to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.